untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today I was taking a look at another standard 2022 deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're building a deck around a wizard's spellbook, the 7 mana artifact from Forgotten Realms that can tap and exile target instant or sorcery card from a graveyard that can also include the opponent's graveyard. Then we roll a d20, this can only be used at sorcery speed, and then if we get between a 1 and 9, we copy that card and we may cast the copy, so we have to pay its mana cost, very relevant in case we're trying to cast the opponent's spells, we also need to have the right colors of mana to cast their spells, but if we get between a 10 and 19, we get to copy that card and cast the copy by paying one generic mana rather than pay its mana cost, so not only do we get a nice mana discount, but we don't need to worry about having the right colors of mana, and then if we're lucky enough to roll a 20, we get to copy each card exiled with the wizard spellbook, and we may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana costs. So that can often provide an overwhelming amount of card advantage, especially if the spellbook has been in play for a while. So how do we build a deck around wizard spellbook? At 7 mana it's very expensive, and it doesn't always have an immediate impact when it comes into play, so we're gonna need to ramp into it, and we're also gonna need a lot of removal to stay alive long enough to leverage the spellbook as our card draw engine. Then another neat trick is to have the world tree in our mana base, since if we have 6 or more lands in play this will fix all our colors, and we can potentially cast red and white spells out of the opponent's graveyard, even if we roll a low number on wizard spellbook. Then we also have the four copies of Kelpie Guide as a way to untap another target permanent we control, so this can ramp into our spellbook by untapping our lands, and once we have spellbook in play we can also untap the spellbook itself with Kelpie Guide to potentially use spellbook multiple times in the same turn. And then if we have eight or more lands in play we can also tap opposing permanents, so that can potentially prevent a creature from attacking. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we've got 2 copies of Blood Chief's Thirst as a cheap removal spell. Can also be kicked to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. If we cast it out of the graveyard with Spellbook, we will still need to pay the extra 3 mana for Kicker if we want to take out something bigger. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Cram Session to gain for life and learn. So in best of 1 we get access to a 7 card sideboard that we can fill with lessons to grab with our Cram Session and that includes environmental sciences to search a basic land and gain two, teachings to draw a few cards, especially if the opponent has more cards in hand than we do, we've got introduction to prophecy as another card draw option, two copies of containment breach to deal with opposing artifacts and enchantments, and finally two copies of mascot exhibition, which is also one of our main win conditions, making an army of various creature tokens that we can also potentially replay out of the graveyard with our wizard spellbook. Then we also have two copies of Flunk as another cheap spot removal spell, the full playset of Curate, which lets us take a look at the top two cards of our library and put any number of them into our graveyard and the rest back on top in any order, and then we draw a card, so this can help fill our graveyard to put additional instants and sorceries in there to enable our wizard spellbook, as well as our two copies of Serpentine Curve, which generates a 0-0 green and blue fractal creature token, and then we put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is 1 plus the total number of instant and sorcery cards we own in exile and in our graveyard. So the fact that it also counts cards in exile means it will still keep track of the cards exiled by Wizard Spellbook without powering down our Serpentine Curve. Then we've got our full playset of Kelpie Guide, two copies of Palaka Predation as a discard spell that we can also play as a tap land, and then the full playset of Soul Shatter as a removal spell that makes the opponent sacrifice their most expensive creature or planeswalker, and this also gets around Hexproof potentially or Ward, which is relevant against some creatures in a format. Then at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Eureka Moment, which lets us draw two cards and then put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield, so this helps us ramp and draw more cards, perfect for setting up our wizard spellbook. And then we've got two different sweepers with two copies of Calling Ritual, destroying each non-land permanent with mana value 2 or less, and then we add black or green for each permanent destroyed this way. So this shines especially against, let's say, the green-white Magecraft decks, which have a low mana cost but can have some pretty large creatures that maybe don't always die to Crippling Fear, which is the other option here, giving all creatures minus 3 minus 3, except creatures of the chosen type, so we can still save our Kelpie guide if we name Beast. And then of course our two copies of Curve, and then finally a one-off copy of the deck of many things as another fun card draw engine, 
we pay 2 mana, tap it, and roll a d20, and then we subtract the number of cards in our hand from the result, and then if the result was 0 or less, we have to discard our hand. If we get between 1 and 9, we return a card at random from our graveyard to our hand. Between 10 and 19, we draw 2, and if we get a 20, which also implies that we're empty-handed, we put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, and when that creature dies, its owner loses the game. So if we can grab a creature out of the opponent's graveyard and that creature dies, the opponent will lose the game. Then we've got our three copies of Spellbook, and then the mana base consists of three copies of the World Tree, as well as two copies of Hall of Storm Giants, as a creature land that can turn into a 7-7 giant with Ward 3. And then we've got two basic islands, four basic swamps, one basic forest, and all 12 pathways in the Sultai colors. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. No blue mana, but Cram Session can potentially help out with that. And uh, yeah, we've got the two land start that we like with World Tree tapped into turn two Hall, also coming into play untapped to let us cast Curate or Cram Session. And then we have these utility lands available for later. Opponent Monorat could be an aggressive Goblins deck, in which case Culling Ritual is going to be quite useful. Opponent still deciding what to do, decides to foretell a card. Alright, so might not be a Goblin deck then. Uh, yeah, play Hall and then I'm liking Curate end of turn. Not sure yet if we're going to need to Predation. Dungeon map, okay. Can maybe cram session to get an answer for that. Spellbook I want to draw. Hall I probably don't need since we have a lot of tap lands already. Does provide double blue but we have world tree which can fix. So we'll put uh, Hall in the graveyard and draw the spellbook. And then I don't mind... I guess predation tapped cram session or I can just cast a predation. Although I wouldn't be able to Eureka Moment next turn. I'm kind of curious what's going on, so I'm gonna Predation. Alright, take the Elixir. They can have another dungeon map. So kind of a red control deck. Using dungeon map as a mana sink. Could be effective. At three mana it doesn't die to the calling ritual. Now we can Eureka Moments. The one drawback of Predation is that it doesn't count as a land to put in play with Eureka Moments. But we could draw into another one. Letter of Acceptance. So our opponent is ramping into something big. Maybe this is a Crackle with Power deck, trying to burn us out. Although they don't have one in hand at least. Another fun fact about Eureka Moments and the Pathways is that you're forced to put the front half of it in play. Now our World Tree is active, so our mana is perfect. And what do we want to do next? Probably just a Cram Session gets... Could go for Mascot Exhibition already. Could go for a card draw spell. I'm okay waiting on Serpentine Curve. So maybe go for Introduction, and see what else we can find. Possible I should have just played Predation as a time plan here to guarantee 7 mana for Spellbook. I like both of these, although I guess Kelpie Guide dies to their burn spell, so just keep the land then. Be able to play Spellbook next turn. And then wait until we can make a bigger Serpentine Curve. Opponent's gonna adventure for the first time. And goes for the Lost Mine. That's okay. And then I could use a spellbook just to exile an extra card, but I might want access to all of these cards, so I'm gonna wait on it. The opponent also didn't have anything for us to exile.
opponent completes a dungeon. Yeah, double dungeon maps, not a bad way to complete dungeons. Another serpentine curve. So now might be a good time to take another look with Palaka Predation. And take it from there. Then maybe play Eureka Moments. And yeah, there we see Crackle, but Crackle has only two mana costs, so we can't take it with Palaka Predation, sadly. So, yeah, just gonna try and end the game as soon as possible at that point. Which probably means casting Serpentine Curve right now. And then maybe try and get lucky here and cast an extra spell. Go with the Curate, which might power up the curve even more. Alright, we missed. So I think I decline then. And, uh... Just cast a curve, although the one awkward thing about casting curve is that uh, it dies to the calling ritual, although I can just soul shatter the goblin. Possible they make another goblin with the two dungeon maps, but it's going to be a windfall instead. So Crackle needs a lot of mana for it to be lethal. So 11 mana can deal 15 damage. So that's currently what they're working with. So it's going to be a while before it's actually 20 damage and we're currently at 22. So it should be safe from a lethal Crackle, even though it can take care of our creatures. Okay. So what's next? Maybe get Crime Session to destroy the opponent's artifacts by getting the Lesson. So we'll have to pay the two mana. Get Containment Breach. Pull up a dungeon map. And then, I guess I'm okay, soul shattering here. And hitting for seven. And then next turn we can serpentine curve again. It's possible that this is a way to copy a spell but shouldn't be able to copy the Crackle. So your opponent's just uh, firing it off. We're at 11. And... What are my options now? Can just double Serpentine Curve to present lethal. They could chum block with their creature land next turn, but that's fine. What if they have another Crackle? We're at 11. So, let's see. 10, 11... Yeah, they could cast another Crackle and kill us. Do I have any way of gaining life? Not at the moment, so I'd have to dig for another Crime Session by going for Eureka Moments, maybe. Don't know if that's better than just presenting Lethal. But it's possible we could do both. Could also go for the opponent spells, since we have World Tree, but... Alright, one mana Eureka moments. Put line in play. And then, I guess we'll moment again, see if we can find a cram session. We cannot. And then I'll just uh, Serpentine Curve. And hope they don't have another Crackle. Opponent is now in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Okay. So what's the next step? Probably just make another Serpentine Curve. Could 
could also go for the windfall, which I don't hate. Discard Crippling Fear. Opponent maybe doesn't realize we have a World Tree that fixes our mana. And uh, yeah, we'll attack. And then... Opponent might have to Chum Block. Could have also activated our Hall of the Storm Giants. But I would like to have Soul Shatter as a way to destroy the Crawling Barons if those attack. Good Soul Shatter now, I suppose. Before they get a chance to block. And then I can either play a Kelpie Guide or keep up Soul Shatter. Play a Kelpie. Alright, so... Another Crackle could do it. They have 11 mana exactly, so they could deal 15 to our face. Opponent's digging, so that's a good sign. Alright, GG's. And our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn 1, play World Tree tapped. Turn 2, Hall of the Storm Giants. And then we can Cram Session, I think. Although I could wait. Because I don't know for sure what I need to get with Cram Session. Although it's usually a safe bet to get Introduction to Prophecy. Can wait and see if we need to cast this as a discard effect or maybe keep it as a land. Opponent's blue red seems relatively slow, so I don't mind taking a look at their hand here. Alright, so it's a uh, mill deck with Tasha Hideous Laughter and solve the equation to get a backup copy. Yeah, Hideous Laughter is kind of annoying. The fact that it exiles our cards also means. We uh, don't get to play them out of the graveyard with Spellbook. It does power up our Serpentine Curve, potentially, but don't have one in hand. Okay, well, introduction, and then we know that Serpentine Curve could be quite strong. Probably not going to need Calling Ritual. I'll still keep a land. And then the goal is to... Try and uh, get our mascot exhibition as soon as possible. And there's a hideous laughter. Didn't mill a ton of cards, and we drew the serpentine curve here, so that's perfect. Yeah, they hit Spellbook, which has a pretty high mana cost. So, could cast Curve now. Could maybe wait to set up an even bigger one, but... Yeah, I think this is just going to kill the opponent in uh, three attacks. And we know they don't have any counter spells at the ready. Could have maybe waited for them to cast Solve the Equation in case they have a bound spell they can now get instead. But I kind of like the early pressure. And then we also want to avoid drawing too many cards against the mill deck, so casting Cram Session might be better. And yeah, our opponent explodes. Serpentine Curve just too powerful against the mill deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We've got access to Cram Session thanks to the black man on our pathway. Cram Session probably going to get Environmental Sciences. As we're currently missing our third land. Opponent on a blue-red Giants deck with a turn to Glimpse. Alright, I think I still am happy to get Environmental Sciences, then turn 3, maybe Kelpie Guide, and then turn 4 I can Sciences plus Crime Session. 
second glimpse from our opponents. So if we can keep them off replaying those by killing any giants we see on site is uh, maybe the way forward. They're not playing Snowlands, so probably not playing Frostbite. Otherwise, Agar into Frostbites could have been effective here. Opponent foretells a card. Could be all sorts of cards in blue reds. Third glimpse. Okay, so still missing green mana, so we'll grab that with the uh, sciences. And then I could keep up Soul Shatter, probably should just use my mana on Crime Session. And either Teachings or Introduction. I'll go with Introduction. There's a chance the opponent can empty their hand here. And then next turn maybe you go for a Eureka moment. Wanna wait on Serpentine Curve until it's at least 6 toughness, maybe 7 even. Calamity Bear, replay one glimpse. So if I Eureka moments and manage to put a land in play, we can still Soul Shatter afterwards, if we also draw the land, that is. So there is a fail rate, but I think I go for it, because if we hit, it's pretty great. Alright, we missed, sadly. So I don't have to put this in play. That way we can put it in play as a black source instead. And then I guess we'll cram session again. Sadly, our opponent gets to untap with a giant, which is the thing we wanted to avoid. And go for exhibition. Take six. Invasion of the Giants. Okay. Can potentially be destroyed by Calling Ritual. Opponent replays Glimpse. It was going to be difficult for us to keep the opponent from casting Glimpse whatsoever if they're playing a Giants deck. All right, land is good. So what's the play here? Could go Culling Ritual into a Soul Shatter. Yeah, that's fine. Don't want to play another Kelpie because then we're overextending into the uh, Battle Frost and Fire. So the card they foretold could also be the uh, giant that has foretell and deals two damage if you control another giant. Could see a squash on Kelpie guide. Yep, that's okay. So now the curve can survive squash potentially. Another invasion. Deck of many things. Not great at the moment since we have a few too many cards in hand. Good introduction to try and find a lands and then I can uh, curve. I think I'm okay keeping curate, so next turn we can maybe curate plus another curve. So if they have another Calamity Bearer, they can still 
potentially trade. And there's Agar. So if they attack with a Charger, we could maybe see like Agar into a burn spell to finish off our token, and then the opponent will draw a card as well. Alright, Charger stays back. I'm gonna curate. Block up predations, not bad. And I also don't mind the land. So we'll keep both. Draw the predation now, I believe. And have a look. Right, back up Agar and the uh, Battle of Frost and Fire. Take the battle. And pass it back. So is this a Quake Bringer? Should see it if that's the case. Nope, so must be something else. Okay. Can play another big Serpentine Curve. Could play a Mascot Exhibition first. Most of which does get destroyed by the Clasm, which will also draw cards with Agar. So maybe that's not the best idea. So, yeah, I guess we'll Curve plus Kelpie. Still happy playing defense, since the late game should favor us, especially with deck of many things in hand. And if they want to kill Kelpie here, that's fine. At least they don't draw with Agar. We'll play the deck, and we have to get pretty unlucky to discard Mascot Exhibition. Return Curate at random. Another Charger. Don't really need Predation. So that can go to the graveyard. I'm fine drawing more lands. Keep my hand size small for deck of many things. So maybe Kelpie and then activates. Right, rituals not great. So that might be stranded in hand for a while until we discard it with deck of many things. Crush the weak. So that was the foretold card. We figured it out. Deals with Kelpie, which would have been fun with deck of many things to use it twice per turn. Crippling Fear can kill Agar. Not all that exciting when they have a backup. But it can also enable some good attacks, I suppose. Sure. Crippling Fear on Fractal. And then we'll get aggressive. This forces a block. That worked out. Maybe should have used the deck before attacking in case we hit one of our removal spells to just attack for the win. But our opponent packs it in. Sweet, so we managed to outgrind our opponent thanks to the deck of many things. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. 
turn two. Have to decide between cram session and curates against the life gain deck. I mean, we know we need to hit our land drops. Kind of prefer curate, so cram session can maybe wait to grab a uh, way to remove the cleric class with containment breach. I guess I could have waited until end of turn. Yeah, it kind of hurts to put these both in a graveyard, but I need lands. Calling Ritual, I guess, also deals with Cleric Class. Alright, we'll Cram Session. And then probably just get Environmental Sciences. Play Tap Predation. And then I'll need to grab my Forests with Sciences to cast Calling Ritual. Soul Shatter, also a decent answer for Valkyrie. So, now that we drew the green source, can maybe wait on the Calling Ritual. And then I might Soul Shatter in response to a creature being cast. Alright, I think that works out. Kill the Valkyrie. And then hope they play another 2-drop. So we can uh, Calling Ritual their entire board next turn. And then we'll still have three mana to work with afterwards, which is enough to play Kelpie maybe, or Eureka Moment even. All right. They had an innkeeper, which they were maybe sandbagging. Now, I don't mind having a look with Predation, playing Kelpie. Double Snakeskin Veil. Okay, the jig is up. So, the Soul Shatter also played around Snakeskin Veil nicely. Play Kelpie. And then we can wait on Crippling Fear, naming Beast. We're kind of out of action ourselves. So, need to find one of our heavy hitters. Don't really want to attack, don't really want a crippling fear for a single creature. So it's a bit of a waiting game. Alright, Hallowed Priests. They might be able to save with double uh, Snakeskin Veil. Although we can also tap it down with Kelpie Guide. Let's curate first. Curve is good. Don't really need another Kelpie. So, have I played land yet? I have not. So this might force double snakeskin veil. It does not. Make it 10-10. And there's our deck of many things. Which we can potentially activate twice thanks to the Kelpie. Ooh, we hit a 20. Nice. And our opponent explodes. Hitting a 20 right away on deck of many things is pretty sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Some early removal into a Kelpie. And Eureka moment to ramp into Spellbook. Alright, against an aggressive Goblin deck. We would love to draw our Sweepers. Captain, probably going to be the target of Flunk. Alright, Calling Ritual is also excellent. So 
So if they play a Lord, I'll probably flunk that since it doesn't die to Ritual. Hope they play more creatures that die to it. Bugbear does not. Take seven. So if I calling ritual, make two mana. Even with one more from Kelpie, I still can't Eureka moment afterwards. Oh well, so be it. And since I'm not blocking, I could consider attacking, although the goblin deck sometimes plays one mana goblins with haste that we can potentially block. Another bugbear. Yeah, crippling fear would have been better in this case. And charger, okay, crippling fear of the top still does it because it shrinks down the charger so it doesn't deal any damage. So we've got a one outer here, so two in 49. That's not it. Eureka moment, put land in play. Play a land on tap land, still doesn't do it. Let's see if we would have drawn it. Cram session, maybe keeps me alive. Can also soul shatter. Could block bugbear soul shatter, but then we die to the charger. Cram session to five and then shun block bugbear. I guess keeps me alive and then mascot exhibition can try to stabilize. Although Battlecry Goblin kills me since they can uh, activate it and attack with the team. All right, well, we had a sweeper, but sadly not the right one for the matchup. This is a matchup where Crippling Fear would have been quite a bit better. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Probably gonna keep Predation as a spell and then play our blue source so we can curate. Opponent's mono whites with a Nadar. Can clean that up with Crippling Fear. And then, kind of like putting both in graveyard. Power up our Serpentine Curve. Alright, now I'm also into the idea of uh, Soul Shatter, or we could Predation to have a look. And then maybe next turn Crippling Fear if they play another creature that dies to it. Alright, so black-white, missing black mana. So what do we care about the most? Don't care about Mastery, don't really care about Blood on the Snow or Poison Cups, so I guess it's Barrowin then. They can answer the Serpentine Curve. But for the most part, we just want to make sure we don't die ourselves and can control the board. Alright, Gargoyle's a little awkward since it survives Crippling Fear. So probably just gonna Crippling Fear for just Nadar. Although now with the treasure they can cast Adventure. So maybe I Soul Shatter. Let the opponent complete their dungeon and then next turn wipe the board. Yeah, that's probably fine. And then I'll Soul Shatter now. I expect him to sack the Gargoyle. And then hopefully they'll play the Adventure.
one foretells and passes. All right, so they seem to be content just having another Nadar in play. If that's the case, I think I let them attack once again in just Eureka moment, which I can also main phase. In case we find something useful, and Flunk will do. So put this in play. And then I guess we'll Flunk now. Kill Nadar. They had a backup. And now do we see the adventurer? Still nothing. Okay, Soul Shatter, not her answer for Nadar. And the deck of many things seems great. Don't mind Flunk. I guess we'll submit zero. Draw the Flunk for now. Kill Nadar. And keep up Soul Shatter. They finally found black mana, so they run out the adventure. They can potentially blood on the snow to get back a creature from the graveyard, but don't really mind. Alright. Hopefully we don't uh, roll too low. I guess I can wait until end of turn to activate. Opponent has Planeswalker removal, but they don't have Artifact removal. So Blood on the Snow just to get back Nadar. And I think we activate and just hope not to roll a 1 or a 2. Oh no. Oof. I guess... We rolled a 3, but we got minus 2 equals 1, so we still return the card at random. I was scared for a second there that we were going to lose our hand. Play Kelpie. Kelpie's going to die, but that's okay. just want to start emptying my hands, maybe clear a path for Serpentine Curve. And yeah, hopefully finds our... Uh, Seven mana artifact at some points. They could have a vanishing verse in hand, which can exile our book, but cannot exile the deck because it's colorless. Probably serpentine curve and then activate. Get to draw two. And then the curve will be answered by the mastery. But yeah, we're taking control of the game now. We'll attack. Probably see mastery. Almost too much removal in hand, which is making the deck a little worse. Again, Soul Shatter end of turn. Just to venture. Can't really snipe it with Soul Shatter. So maybe I keep Soul Shatter in hand, just play Kick Thirst on the Gargoyle so we can Soul Shatter. Maybe Eureka moment first. And I guess we'll get a mascot exhibition to start applying pressure. So they can play the Lich twice, go for Tomb of Annihilation.
can discard a card, do mines. Maybe Ritual over Crippling Fear. And there's a Spellbook, sweet. So play that. And then, what do we want to do next? Maybe go for the discard spell. Cast it for one mana. And yeah, they did have Vanishing first, so that can answer my book. We'll just take the Lich. And then... Okay, maybe still we'll activate the deck end of turn. If they want a blood on the snow to get back a creature, they cannot vanishing verse. Yeah, well, let's go digging for another one. Playing the mascot exhibition maybe not super helpful given that they were probably going to cast blood on the snow just to get back a creature anyway. So we just gave them some free creatures to kill. I think we'll be alright. And uh, I'll take the two damage. All right, a big serpentine curve. Get another exhibition curve and still have Soul Shatter available at instant speed. can activate our creature land as well. So as much as I wanted to get the uh, spellbook going, it was the deck of many things that got us across the finish line once again. So yeah, despite being a one-off, we almost got to see more of the deck of many things than our spellbook. But of course they're both great and uh, they sort of complement each other nicely. So yeah. Overall, pretty pleased with this Sultai control build. I've tried a few different builds, like maybe a blue-red treasure deck that tries to cheat Spellbook into play as quickly as possible, and then has a few ways to improve your luck when rolling dice, but that one wasn't as successful as the Sultai build. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.